Okay. Hi. Are we live? Okay, we're live. Hi. Welcome to our Tuesday, May monthly meeting with Mocha. She's doing her tag thing and then she'll join us in a minute. Um, this is David Potita, who's our communication director. And who are we? We are the Hi Rainbow everyone. Support Welcome Group. Welcome to the broadcast. We are the Rainbow Support Group SC based out of Spartanburg, South Carolina. You can find us at www.rainbowsupportgroupsc.com. And we also have three website pa uh, Facebook pages. We've got a Facebook page for a group that's closed for our members. We've got a Facebook page that's open. And we also have our new Charleston chapter page as well. And we're really excited. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, the other day we reached 1,400 likes on our Facebook page. And I'm really excited you guys really like our page and like what we're doing. And thank you very much for helping us spread the word so that we can get the LGBT to thrive and survive. And together we can change the world. So I'm really psyched about that. But David, we're just waiting on Mocha now. Yep, she'll she'll be in in just a minute. Uh, she's doing what I'm doing. I don't know if you can see, but I'm I'm on my cell phone here and I've got the live stream pulled up and I'm sharing it all over the planet. So it's exciting right. stuff. I've got, got right. some of our board members sitting here with me and showing them how our broadcasts work from the back end. And so, you know, it's, it's a fun wonderful evening so and we're Absolutely. so excited that all of you can be here with us tonight we are so happy to have all of you here we've already got some comments pouring in let's go ahead and look at those uh let's see there's kyson uh kyson says hi and hi, we've got vic says hello uh we've got so many people joining us already and we are so happy to have you here thank you all so much for coming to see us and you know, guys, we're not doing this for us. We're doing this for you. So it, it makes me and Kim super happy when we see all of you come into the stream and join us for the lives. It, it's all for you. It's not for us, but it is all for you. So thank and you so much for being here with us. Absolutely. Now, have we tagged everybody? Because I don't know. I don't know. Not, okay, I'm in the everybody. process of doing that right now. So, um, okay. No matter what. Everybody Seeing this, then I'm putting it in a lot of groups. So we hope, you know, wherever you may be in the world, that you see this pop up somewhere that you're connected to. That is our goal, anyway, for this to pop right. up wherever you are connected. Right. right. That is exactly right. That is exactly right. Okay. Brandon said, I'll leave it alone. I'm doing too much on the computer that I don't know anything about. And for everybody who knows me knows it's best that I don't do that because I'll mess stuff up. So I'm going to do my phone over here. <laughs> that I know how to work. That I know how to work. Miss Mocha oh. should be joining us in just a minute. Thank you all so much for, for uh, bearing with us as we get this shared all over the place. Right, so we know what we're doing. There's oh, Ms. Kalara. Thank you so much for the love. And Lee, hello. It's great to see you. Fox, I am so glad that you're here tonight. It is great to see you again. Hi, everybody. We love all of you so very much. Thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. And forgive me for not paying attention to my screen in front of me. I am just sharing this around everywhere. So bear with me just a moment as I pop this into all the various different groups and now, pages. it's funny because I'm actually sitting here to talk to the people while you and Mocha do that. So yeah, I'm not doing that as you guys can see because I just screwed up. So David and Mocha are doing that and Kim's not doing that. Yes, hello to everyone who's joining us. Hello, hello. Make sure you share this on your page. Remember, we're trying to get to that one LGBT person that doesn't know about us yet. So always share it and push it forward so that everybody knows that they have support. Um, while I have you on, David, you know, I can talk about David Scott. We are doing a, the rainbow started a Friday support live every Friday at 7 PM. We just throw topics out there from our board. This coming Friday is going to be David's turn. David is going to talk about some relaxation techniques. Yep, he said. Do you want to yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, this Friday, I thought, you know, with all of us, you know, still living in the pandemic and all these uncertain times, I know myself personally, I'm getting a little bit more stressed out than I normally would in my normal life. So I thought it might be a great idea for us to just go over some relaxation <laughs> techniques 
and learn how we can de-stress and take just little moments out of our day for ourselves to bring us back down to a more to a more grounded place and you know just be a little more centered and a little more even keel to keep us you know to keep us from going so crazy you know a lot of us i've been pretty well isolated for 45 days now and you go stir crazy let me tell you you go completely stir crazy when you're in isolation uh so it's you know it's a good good thing to have some relaxation techniques in your back pocket for when you do get super stressed out so that's going to be super important info that i want you all to be able to learn with me this friday so please join me uh friday at seven i might even be able to talk kim williams into popping into the live stream of course of course because that gives me something to do i too am still in quarantine so any interaction with the humans i'm good with i'm good with and stress yeah and i think you're right um, all right and let's uh let's we've what, just David? got miss mocha joined us so let's go ahead and bring her on the screen here okay. there she is hello uh, miss mocha hi live hi miss mocha live from spartanburg all right very good hi miss mocha i was talking about all right um, so everyone i am going to uh sorry I, i'm gonna go ahead and uh become the man behind the curtain over here and let miss mocha and miss kim have the floor very good thank you david thank you david for all that you do no kidding um, what we talked about was I introduced us and the website and that I'm Kim Williams and this is, of course, Princess Mocha. And um, we're the co-founders of the Rainbow Support Group. David is our communications chair, which is why he's in the back of the studio. Um, we talked about his video on Friday for, for Friday virtual support. Um, and he's going to do some relaxation techniques and stuff like that. I told him I would join him as well. Okay. So. So how are you? Crazy. Like, <clears throat> you know, some states are going out of lockdown, like going out from being on lockdown. And, you know, I mean, that would be nice. But at the back of my mind, I think it's a bad decision. So I'm kind of sitting, you know, in between a rock and a hard place, you know. Uh, so do we actually get, should we go out? Should we actually go back to partying again? Or do we continue to stay in our houses and try to stay away from everyone else? Then I say that the other day we went out, um, I had to go driving and I looked and I'm like, okay, this is so weird. Like it's still there, but it's not there, but people are going out. But when I took Brandon to the store, they weren't wearing masks. And then I hear about South Carolina and they're just having a free for all. Okay. They're just doing whatever. And I'm like, okay, now what do we do? When it was, this is a danger. We all knew what to do, but now I don't know what to do. <laughs> so it is causing more stress. What I've told people in the last couple of days, cause I've talked to a couple of stressed out people um, is that, we need to find something to focus on while we're in. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're in, I don't recommend running back out. And plus, like I said, where are all these cars going? Everything's closed. I was confused the other day. It really, Mocha, like you said, you're confused. It's confusing. I saw a lot of cars, but all of the stores were closed. So where are y'all going? What are you doing? Did I miss the memo? I'm confused. Where are y'all going? Um, I could understand if you had somewhere to go, right. but you still can't sit at restaurants. You kill, still can't do, I mean, down here in Florida. Yeah. You can't in Florida. Everything's starting to open back up slowly. Like, <laughs> And how soon are you going to run out? Right. Okay. So I told somebody today that I'm thinking of it as a sabbatical. I'm on a sabbatical and I'm doing some work while I'm doing that. And I'm just kind of like on vacation, kind of thinking about it like that. Instead of trying to hurry up and go out, mm -hmm. I need to, I don't know. I don't know the answer. I don't know what you know, we should I do. I did not have this virtual platform like Facebook, Instagram, meet me, that I would be going even more crazier because like this is actually given like a way 
to actually talk and see face to face. I can't her. even imagine Mocha. I can't even imagine as social as the LGBT is on the regular. If right. we didn't have this kind of connection, I do not know what we would have done. I mean, I talked to Dole today from Atlanta and blessed and grateful, man. Blessed and grateful. Yes, we've had a pandemic, but blessed and grateful. We have been able to communicate. I can see your face, Mocha. Now, I can't be near you right now, but I can see you and you can see me and we can see each other. We've had meetings of 10 and 12 people together and all of us looking at each other. Okay, this virtual stuff, it is really wicked cool. It is really wicked cool. And, and we are spoiled. And we are, think about it. Can you imagine if had, we had nothing and we're all working on our phones. We're all working. We're all talking. We're doing emails. We're ordering stuff. We're doing <laughs> Netflix. What if we didn't have it? Oh, my I God. Know. I would go so crazy. I would go. Oh, crazy. my God. People would be crazy. Yes. And that brings me to a topic of the prides. We got a message the other day of what are the updates? Okay. No updates yet. Everything that we know of up, up to August 1st was canceled. Um, I know that black pride upstate spoke about possibly rescheduling it for another time, but I haven't heard. I know that the next one that we're looking at that's in danger is Charleston pride. And the reason why we're Real intrepid about that one is because that was going to be the weekend of our kickoff for our Charleston chapter in Charleston. So it was going to be a really big weekend for the Rainbow and for Pride, and it was going to be really great. But we don't know. Now we're still planning on it. Uh, everything is, nothing has stopped the plans for Pride in Charleston. Nothing has stopped the Pride for Upstate. Nothing has stopped the Pride for Atlanta. I have not heard. So the updates for Pride are everything up to August 1st is no. Everything after August 1st, I haven't heard yet or received any super updates yet. But we'll let you know because Pride's our thing. We do Pride. <laughs> and this Pride's going to be obnoxious. The first Pride after this is going to be a 100% hug fest. Oh, if you don't yeah. want to be touched, don't go. Right. If you don't want somebody to hold your hand or pet your hair or touch you, don't go. Don't because we're going to be insane. We're going to be all over each other. It's going to be fabulous. Yeah, I'll be there. So look for me Stay and Mocha. We'll be there. Right. Whatever pride it is, we're going. Um, okay. And Mocha, I wanted to talk about Jason. You want to talk about Jason? Yes, I'm sure several of you have seen um, some of our recent status updates. We have added a new board member to the already fabulous board that we have already brought to you. Um, he comes from Colorado. His name is Jason Law. Kim, would you like to tell us um, his Well, position? I know of him. I've known of him. He has been a great supporter of the Rainbow for a while now. Um, the reason why he got involved in the Rainbow is because he's from the upstate of South Carolina. And as a teenager and as a young person grew up gay in the South and he found it to be just horrible. Okay. And then he grew up in his life and he went away and he is now married a man named Clint and they live in Colorado. Um, when he found out about the rainbow, he thought it was so cool that we exist. And he right. said, I would have been so much happier had I known of a rainbow when I was a kid and there was no rainbow for me. So he supports us because he wants to give the rainbow to other LGBT that don't have the rainbow. And I think that's beautiful. Um, this and year for like the year said, 2000. He knows about the struggle from living in the South. Like, Way. I, I can't speak about how it is in Colorado because I haven't been there, but right. he comes from here. And so he knows right. the struggles that we have to deal with with the right. ignorance that comes that we get the hatefulness he knows all about it he does and when he talks about it it's funny because he also talks about it from a person who is older um i don't mean old i mean older um to where he sees the lgbt struggle a little bit different a little bit more serious 
Um, he comes back from, you know, when it wasn't okay. When he was here, he didn't even know. He, he told me, he said, it was so funny because of Facebook. You know, I moved away from my life in South Carolina and I thought that I was the only gay person. I was the only gay person. And then Facebook came out and I noticed all these people that I had gone to school with and that they were gay. And he said, that's so weird because the whole time growing up, I was the only one. I, I didn't see anymore. There weren't anybody else out there. So the rainbow is wonderful. And I love it that Jason, he, he cares so much about the LGBT. He called me and he said, what can I do? What more can I do? Can I be on the board? Can I make a difference? And I'm like, sure you can. You want to be a member at large? Great. Because then we can get another outside view. Just like Mocha said, <laughs> her and I can clock and educate anybody on the struggles of the South and the LGBT. But if you talk to me about New York or Key West or, or Colorado, I don't know. I don't know what they go through, which is why we were excited when we got the, the Charleston chapter. We're now going to deal with a new population of people that have different issues than those in the upstate. Okay. Same with Colorado. We're going to hear all kinds of things out of Colorado that isn't like here, like his front porch. He's got his front porch decorated. So cool. And it's kind of LGBT with an attitude, but it's real classy. But you like wouldn't that. do that. You wouldn't do that here. Okay. Right. It would just beg people to say stuff to you or somebody would wreck it or take it or whatever. But his is like shining, but it's Colorado and they can. You can do whatever you want there. You know, it's yeah, really cool. Too. Yeah. So I feel honored that we have Callie and Jason. I, I, I'm, I'm amazed that we have people from other cities who value what we do and the mission and the vision of the rainbow. And not only are they willing to talk about it, but they're willing to come work it. And we all know working for the rainbow, it's a real job. Right. It's a real job. It's a it real job. Stop. It doesn't stop. It doesn't stop at all. No, mm -mm. no. You And the second you get tired, it picks up again. So, yeah. In the pandemic, we're still here. And that's one of the reasons why we are so grateful that we've already kind of did the live platform. Um, that way we kind of already got our practice and got our A game on it. And then now when we need it, we're here. And so now we're making all these new connections. Um, Blessed and grateful. Blessed and grateful. We did not intend on that. The weirdest stuff. The rainbow is blessed beyond repair. Um, how we got all ready for this ahead of time, I don't know. We didn't see this coming. Um, and training the new board members to do videos. It's so funny because it's so nerve wracking at first, but I forgot because we've been doing it for so long that me and Mocha were like, okay, it's a live. Great. Whatever. Okay. Let me go take a shower. Okay, great. We're done. That's our prep. Okay. Just to <laughs> let you know, she's like, well, what do you want to talk about? Okay. What do I want to talk about? We've done this for so long. It's very comfortable. And so I had to tell my board members to calm down that you'll get used to it because and this is our new normal. Like everybody said, we have to get used to the new normal. This new virtual stuff, you got to get used to it. Okay, right now. And I find it to be a benefit. I know it's terrible, the pandemic. And a lot of people are suffering due to the pandemic. But the pandemic is actually teaching us to communicate better. Right. Okay, and, and we know, like, if I have to talk to Mocha, but I don't want her to misinterpret what I'm going to say, I video her. That way she can see my face and she can see that I'm not screaming at her. Okay. Or, or I, somebody's having a really hard time. Okay. Well, I want you to see my face. I don't want to just talk to you. I don't want, we've become spoiled with this. Plus not only that with all this time, okay. everybody's like, do you have time to talk to me? Yeah, I got time to talk to you. And if not now, I'll talk to you in a minute. Cause I got all day. Brother. Okay, I got all day, all day to talk to you. That brings up um, some of our board members, I'm sure, because I've, I've talked with a few people that have watched our live streams, and they sensed some kind of, you know, tension or awkwardness on camera. But some of our board members have never really live streamed before. So we're bringing a whole never. new, like, platform down their path, and 
we're going to help them with it. So <laughs> never, never. And it's funny because Mocha has done it as entertainment for years and I've been right there beside her. So I'm used to it. I don't necessarily like it, but I'm used to it. Like I know what they're right. talking about, what's important, what you need to worry about. But dealing with new people, it's so funny. But what do I know that in a year, in six months, they're going to kick ass. Because okay. once you figure out how easy this is, and it's just like me talking, like I'm just talking to you, Mocha, just like I'd sit at your house. And remember, though, we're not stuffy either. We're not doing that news channel five shit. Okay, I don't care. <laughs> I don't it care. does look like it. That's why I said welcome. Um tuning in from Spartanburg. <laughs> right, exactly. But I look a little too casual. I look ready for pride. Do you see all this? I'm just you ready for our pride. first live. Our very first live was right here on this couch. We were just sitting here. Yeah. I would hold my phone up. With for, my an phone hour, up. For, for an hour. For an hour. For an hour. You'd like hold your phone for an phone. hour. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. We are that organization that started from literally the ground up. Literally the ground up. Um what was I going to say? Um, if you are oh. joining us for the first time, um, we're going to leave this video up so you can see what we've already talked about. But I also want to keep bringing up, we have an, e an email list. And if you want to be a part of that to let us know, um, that way you can get all of the information. Um, you'll also see links for our website go across the screen. Because um, we're cool like that. I know. I was about to say, I was like, I was just talking about us holding my phone up and now look at us. We're both. I know, right? Up. Right? The pandemic, I'm telling you, I know it's awful, but we've done so good during the pandemic. Um, I did want to talk about, I've been getting some feedback over our Friday support videos. Um, the last two people really, really enjoyed Mocha. Um, and mm -hmm. somebody even called and said, you need to put updates in the newsletter. And I thought, man, that would be a great idea. Like highlights from their videos in the newsletter. The information that our trans department researched and did and brought to the floor for two weekends in a row was fabulous. Okay, fabulous. Talked about health issues, talked about binder issues, opened the door to more communication on issues, um, talked about the safety issues, talked about, I mean, it was great. So we're super proud of our trans department. Um, it's four people. We've got two female and two male. Um, and so our trans department actually is headed up by Mocha, myself, and four trans coordinators. Okay, so we can get you whatever information that you need. Um, these people really care about the trans issues going on, and they are researching this stuff crazy. Um, I'm really pleased with our trans department. And I wanted to say that out there about the videos. These videos are getting a good response on Fridays. Remember, if you don't like an issue we're covering that Friday, skip it and come to the next Friday. Um, like we said, this coming Friday is going to be David with some skills and some calming things, some relaxation mm -hmm. stuff. The following Friday is going to be Piedmont Care. We saw a video um, by P Pride Link. And Pride Link is out of Greenville, South Carolina. And their aid organization that they deal with primarily is called Aid AIDS Upstate. Aid Upstate. Um, and Aid Upstate and P Pride Link did a video together answering questions about HIV and STIs in the quarantine time. Like, how do you get tested now during this time? You know, what things should we care about and worry about? So I called out to the Spartan. Uh, the Rainbow is based out of Spartanburg, South Carolina. So our contact is a company called Piedmont Care. So I contacted Piedmont Care and said, do you guys want to do something like this for our counties and cities? Like Greenville and then they deal with certain counties and then Piedmont Care deals. She said she would love to. So next, not this Friday, but the next Friday is going to be right. Piedmont Care. And um, I think that by Pride Link doing that, I even shared their video. Um, remember, education is why we have the highest rates of infection. Um, Non-education is why we have the highest rate of pregnancies. Education is why we don't, you know, suicides, the highest rate. Okay, we've got to educate people. And I think that by right. Piedmont Care... And the rainbow having a um, 
having a partnership together, I think it helps us teach more farther. So I'm excited she's coming. Oh, yeah. And like, I mean, every time we have condoms with Kim, we talk about the area and why it looks the way it does while we have some of the highest rates. Um, right. You know, South Carolina oh. alone has is 5% higher in reproduction rates. And we are like lowest in education about that alone. And there's the so, picture. The picture. You don't even have that. to teach it. All you got to do is look at the picture. It's terrible. And this, the difference is nothing but conservative laws and lack of education. Okay, if you tell people how to take care of themselves and you tell people what things are and you educate them, then they don't do stupid things. Okay, well, yeah, some people do stupid things anyway, but but yeah, yeah I've, education I've, I've is I've actually key. talked to a few people and like some of them do not take the proper steps and, you know, use the right protection because they they've been to other cities and apparently it's just not the same there which by that map confirms it but they probably haven't even seen that map so they wouldn't know that like they wouldn't know it's an issue sucks. but that's what we're going to try to bring in piedmont care because that is a great asset to have about because they have um unlimited amounts of education for us to learn and they can help us and they're here to help us and she was super excited when i called her I was like, are you interested in doing something like this? And she's like, absolutely. I'm excited. Right. And I'm Every like, time cool. I've been, it doesn't seem really busy either. So like they're eager. Right. Right. And, and they're so cool. And I told her that that was one of the reasons why the rainbow really grabbed a hold of her. Her name's Lori Bishop. <clears throat> um, she's super cool. Okay, like my big thing with the rainbow is you got to be cool enough because people aren't going to come to you if you're too stuffy. Okay, this chick tattoos everywhere, plugs in her ears. I mean, really cool, knew what she was talking about. No matter what subjects we brought up, she didn't bat an eye. There was nothing too kinky, nothing too weird, nothing uncomfortable at all. Like I could have stayed and talked to those ladies for days, but I didn't have anything else to talk about. I mean, they were cool. And then in their lobby, they've got candy bowls, but there's not candy in them. There's condoms. In them. <laughs> so you can take whatever you want, however many you want, and it's all free. And so, yeah, so that's not this Friday, but next Friday. But we're also blowing the Facebook up and the emails up with calendars for you guys so everybody can keep up. We are putting in reminders for people on our email list. Um, so that you don't have to remember every day, okay? That you can just look at a calendar and we've got it written down for you. What else was I going to say? Oh, okay. So we started talking about this and David says that we're like at the halfway, so we're good. So we can take our time. Um, I've been hearing oh, from people. that I can't check it. What I can, he, he keeps telling me. He, he, we got it like a system over here's my phone and I'm watching the people coming in and then he's back there talking to them and then he's putting the stuff on the screen and he's telling me a time so I know the time running it's really cool it's like I got this whole system going on um a lot of people have been calling and talking to me about a trans issue um or I guess anybody having an issue, I guess, um, about surgeries being postponed right now during the pandemic and, you know, the lockdown and that some doctor's appointments have been canceled. Some um, scheduled court dates have been postponed and it's really affecting people because they and then everybody's like, so what? Who cares? It, it, when it's over, they'll get it. I'm like, yeah, but you don't understand. Psychologically, they might have been waiting 10 years for that day. And now that day is not even another day. It's a, we don't know. <laughs> so they're all right. tripping. Okay. So <laughs> like you were talking about the stress right now, it is hitting a lot of people more. And you think, but why? Some of the cities are coming out of quarantine. But just like you said, and just like I said, but is it over yet? Do we know? Are we afraid? I mean, I, what's the answer? We don't know. 
So everybody's hitting an extra stress on top of stress. And I've noticed it on Facebook. People are getting snappy. I'm watching people respond to people and be all like, shut the hell up. It's like, why are you doing that? Oh, Don't do that. Dude. Right? Don't do that. Don't do that. You're just having a day. You were in the house too long. Think of it as a sabbatical. Yeah. Think of it as like me. I can't go home. Like I want to go home. The other day, Mocha, I had a pure temper tantrum. I wanted to go back to work. I wanted things to be normal and I want to go home. Okay, period, point blank, that's it. I want to go home. And then I'm like, wait a minute. Even if everything was totally okay, you can't go home. Right. home the house isn't ready. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. If you're okay. Oh, you froze. Can you hear me? Well, David, is she frozen or am I frozen? No, I think uh, I think Kim has frozen up on us. So, Kim, if you can hear us, uh, please relaunch your link. Uh, go out and come back into the studio. But for now, uh, let's uh, you and I carry on uh, because we do have you know quite a number of viewers. So we'll we'll just plug ahead and we'll we'll catch Kim back up when she rejoins us. Okay, okay, because I was I did not know what happened. Um, I guess I'm gonna since we're already at that thirty minute mark, we're gonna go ahead and start talking about the word of the month. Um. So we've had in January, it was tolerance. February was trustworthiness. March was cooperation. And then April was respect for the community and the environment. So now it's May and the word or words of the month is commitment and dedication. Now it's very ironic that, you know, like, because I planned all of these words for each month at the beginning. So in January, I decided to come up with this whole year of character development skills that we can learn and focus on month by month. So for me, it's commitment and dedication. And what have we been doing? We've been adding new board members to the rainbow and we just added another one. So how ironic that we're talking about commitment and dedication and our board members now can especially, and members of the rainbow, can work and exhibit all of these character development skills that we're bringing to you. So when you talk about commitment and dedication, number one, you have to pursue tasks even when, dif even when difficult or uninteresting. You know, if you're at a job, you're at school, you're at home, you're gonna have to have tasks that are difficult or uninteresting. So you're gonna have to base your judgment and your actions based on how you feel about that. And the only way to excel in an active manner is to just carry the same way you would if you were doing something you liked. Um, number two, have a commitment for learning, you know, even in a lot of, I know we don't talk politics or religion, but a lot of things throughout history really want you to learn something every single day. You learn something new, always continue to learn because um, there's endless of knowledge. Number three, pursue worthwhile endeavors, have goals, put them and then make sure your actions are all leading up to the, the finish, the conclusion of that goal. And that kind of runs into number four, have a duty or obligation and then see its conclusion because the conclusion is the big goal. And then you get to work and learn on something new. Did you have anything you wanted to add with that? Do you like the, that word commitment and dedication, David? No, I, I like it. And you know, it's very ironic because when you, when you sat down and planned these words and when you showed me the list back in, in December for the, for the year, you know, we thought, Oh, this is a great list. This is a great list. And little did we know 
the plans that the year 2020 had in store for us and that these words were going to line up with what was happening in the world. It was, it was almost like the universe is saying, okay, this is, I'm going to force you to learn what all this means. Uh, but commitment and dedication, I mean, the nail on the head this month, us as your rainbow support group board have just really had a crash course in commitment and dedication. We've, signed contracts and we've committed ourselves to the mission of the rainbow I and mean, we're we're on lockdown with with contracts we are contractually locked to the rainbow so right. we're we're all in we're committed we're dedicated uh and we're dedicated for you uh we're, we're dedicated to doing this work to help each and every one of you but on a personal level you know for me commitment for me means that if I tell you I'm going to do something, I'm going to follow up and do it. And if I forget to do it, you better come and knock me upside the head. Hey, David, you forgot. Send me that link or shoot me that email. So a lot of times, you know, when we make commitments and we dedicate ourselves to something, we do sometimes need help from others to carry out those commitments. So don't ever be afraid to ask for help when you commit to something. Right, right. And I think we've got Kim back, so let's bring her back on the screen. Hi there. I don't know. I don't know. I have no answer for you as to where I went or why. I don't know. One day I'm going to come on and I'm going to sound so technologically so we've like we've just been art. talking about our word of the month. Good. Again, applies. Did you see that, Mocha? We've been talking about our word of the month, Kim. Yes, and I saw that, and it applies, huh, Mocha? Commitment and dedication? Yes. Did you go? So you, you got to see a little bit of that? A little bit as I was fighting to do my thing. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. was like, I couldn't remember where you left off, but your whole screen froze. And I was like, okay, so did she freeze or did I freeze? <laughs> I know, right? Like, who's having a problem? It was me. It was me. It was okay. me. It was me. <laughs> Um, yeah, while commitment back, and dedication, you know, you know, commitment yeah, and like, dedication are my number one now. Yeah. But each I judge people by that. <laughs> what? So if you have followed through and you've actually been able to grow with your tolerance, your trustworthiness, your cooperation, and then your respect for community environment, commitment is just that next stepping stone to get you on the proactive path that you want to walk down. Right, and I a love positive how path. All going together. Me too, and they all apply to everything as we've gone along. That's cool. Right. And they're all good human things, though. I mean, and there are skills that we need, like tolerance and being trustworthy and cooperating and respecting your community and the people around you and being committed and dedicated. These are all really good human things to do this that's good shit right there okay so i don't mind that at all we can talk about right. that shit all day all day now, you know you what though i did that you wanted because i know you got cut out um was well i did i mean i mean we can talk about, about what you wanted to, i mean yeah i just had those questions from lacy oh yeah let's and, do that and i wanted to go do you want me to do those or do you want to do your stuff first yeah, do yours, and then I, that way I kind of can end. Okay, and, and then you can end it, because then we're pretty much done with everything. Okay, all right. Lacey, Lacey is a Rainbow member, and she is on her way to surgery for her trans boyfriend. Um, and they're having top surgery. And she had some questions, and I thought I'd throw them out there for the community just to let you know not only that ed education is key, so those people that aren't trans, you're going to learn something today. And for those spouses of, partners of, parents who have to care for people after top surgery. These are some really great questions and you wouldn't think about it unless you were having top surgery. So the rainbow is here to teach you and this is going to be our segment for condoms with Kim. Okay. Now, if you guys have any questions about condoms, you can give me a call. If you want to know about dental dams or anything, just give me a call and you can, and we'll talk about it all day. Okay. So Lacey said, what are some helpful things that helped you prepare for your top surgery? 
And I thought, well, I never even ask anybody that. What did they do to prepare for? I don't know. I guess you'd get, you'd need to get your nurse ready, you know, to help you. And I don't know. These are great questions. If you well, bought a prepare for surgery from which step? From the very beginning? From No, they're going in for top surgery. So how do they prepare for it? Did, did they prepare for it? Like mentally, physically, what did you get ready for? These are important questions that we don't think about. And like, I don't have an answer for you off the chain. I'm going to have to go consult with people. So if you guys would like to let us know, let us know. Um, yeah, the other one was down in the comments too. Just throw some. Absolutely. Like, maybe Cause we need, and I'll write like, down an answer. Okay. Cause we don't have an yeah. answer. Um, if you bought a mastectomy pillow, was it worth it? I haven't heard of anybody that bought a special pillow. I know that they keep wrapped for a certain amount of time and they need pressure on it, but we always deal with people that are usually broke. <laughs> so I've never heard of anybody buying a special pillow for that. Have you mama? Mm -mm. No, I haven't That's either. I'm writing all these questions down. So I, I know, right that. there. I, I, re I printed mine off because I'm like, these are really great questions. Um, was what was the most annoying thing post-op and was there a solution to help uh, the only part i'm involved in is they're super wasted after it's over <laughs> and they want to be naked and then they're sore that's all i've heard about but there's probably a billion things that i don't know so we would love to hear hi lacy we would love to hear more. These are great questions. I wish I had we answers for you right now, but I don't, but I can get them for you. And great questions. Um, what is, what do I need to be prepared as a caretaker? Great question. Okay. We always talk to the T boys about what they need, but what does the caregiver need to be ready for? What do they need to expect? That's great questions. Lacey, you rock. You rock. And I would say to you, just love them. That's all. And don't let them do a lot. And remember, they're going to be super jacked and they're going to want to do a million things. So make them lay down. I see a lot of answers in the comments. <laughs> Me like too. Somebody the said they ordered their pillow off of Amazon for $35. So, okay, cool. Lee said he got one of those you put, like you put around your neck. Cool. Cool. See, and, and yeah, so there's little tricks and there's stuff. Um, what was it you wish you knew, your partner knew about the whole process? That's deep. Lacey, that I, I, I'm going to get that answer, but I'm going to have that answer for you later, probably when it's no good to you anymore. <laughs> but I would love to know what do you, what did, what, do you think that they wish their partner knew during this procedure? Well, I, I've heard things from trans people though, that they wish their partner knew how much they loved that they stood by them. You know, that the trans person really, really, really wanted that person to know how much it was important that they were there with them, you know, and, and physically helping them because they have trouble lifting their arms and stuff like that. So you'd want somebody to be helpful and understand that you hurt. Yeah. Right. And then Lisa she said, is there any, you know, the arms will be sore. I can. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Terrible. That's why when people say stupid shit about trans, it drives me crazy. Cause they're like, yeah. Cause they want to do that. I'm like, yeah. Cause that sounds like a fun day. Yeah, I want to go have my chest ripped right. out, okay? Okay, this is something that I want to do because it sounds like fun. Okay, y'all are idiots. Right. No, they don't want... If they didn't have to do that, they wouldn't do that. That shit's awful. And it's very hard. Now, everyone, just like having a baby, when people have a baby, they're all like, oh my God, I'm never going to have a baby. And then they have a baby and you're like, oh, cool. Every trans person going in for top surgery is freaking out. But every trans person, when they wake up and they're still wasted, they're all like, look, look, look. <laughs> every one of them. 
every one of them. They think that it is the world's greatest everything. They would just walk down the street like that if they could, all fucked up, just walking down the street. But you can't do that. <laughs> you can't do that. But yeah, Lacey, great questions. What would be helpful to be prepared for top surgery? I don't know these questions. I don't know. And I want to know. Like, yeah, I'm going to have some conversations in the next couple of days. Um, maybe by the time you said you guys are going to be there a week with the doctor. Well, cool. Maybe I can get some answers for you in a week because because these questions are really great questions. Um, I really like the participation the rainbow has been having lately. We're getting lots of input. We know what you guys want to see. We're excited that you guys were excited about our trans videos and the information they were bringing to you. I'm really pleased about that. I am, I am, I am. And Lacey, these rock, man. Lacey, these rock. What questions? I, like I didn't say we don't claim to be, you know, medical professionals, but we do have a lot of resources. So what we do whenever you give us these questions, we could spit out an answer, but you know, that answer might not be completely true depending on the person because everyone's different. You know, when you go in for top surgery, they have to check all your blood levels, your calcium levels, all of that. That's just one of the things to the many that you'll have to do to get prepared. So you'll have a thorough answer back after we consult all of the, right. you know, the professionals. Right. With us. Right. Now, if I had an answer for you, had I heard of that before, then I would have no problem in saying to you what I know, because that's what we do. But right now, what I think is really cool about these questions, Lacey, is you know how long I've been doing this and how much I love trans people. Um, I, and brand new questions, brand new questions. I'm excited. So now I get some research and I get to go look and find out and talk to some people about their experiences because I know if I talk to one trans person, their suggestion might be different than another one. So I want to talk to a bunch of people mm -hmm. and I want to find out some different viewpoints and answers for you. First of all, I want to say as an ally of a trans person, which is what you are right now and a partner to a trans person, I think it rocks that on the way to the surgery, you're trying to figure out how to be the best girlfriend ever. And I think that rocks. Okay. Thank you very much for loving the trans. They really, they deserve it. And right now they're having such a hard time. And I'm excited that you still got to do your trans surgery because I know some trans surgeries have been postponed. So right. it, 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 you know, it's tough on some, some didn't get to have theirs right now. And now we're waiting to see. You know. Were there any questions so, or comments? Um, Lee and, and we saw him given lots of suggestions. Um, and then now you cover your thing because we don't, we've got like 15 minutes left, five, 10 minutes left. Okay. So, um, we're going to talk about this, like chapter in this book. It's only one page and then there's an exercise. Um, we're not going to do the exercise. The exercise is like how to relieve, like how to silence the buzz. Um, okay. but we're going to talk about worry. Um, close your eyes for a moment and think about the things that have troubled you over the past week. How many are well-founded concerns and how many are unjustified worries? Just that sentence, you want to, that makes you think and you're starting to analyze, you know, what have you overly thought about, you know, like concerns and then actually unjustified worries. There is a subtle, dif a subtle difference between concern and worry. Concern is reasoned and purposeful based on tracking a logic of cause and effect. We might feel we must shut all the windows before we leave the house, concerned that someone might break in or that the wind might blow in and knock over a vase of flowers. Tracing the consequences of our actions upon others, we act diplomatically to avoid unnecessary harm or embarrassment. Through concern, we avert discomfort and hence gain the potential for feeling more relaxed. Worry, on the other hand, lacks the, 
the logicality of concern. <laughs> Is that a word? You're going to have to bear with me. Instead, it tends to concentrate on pointless wishing that we could change the past or dwelling on unavoidable aspects of the future, which I have definitely been doing during this, like during this whole pandemic. Right. Moreover, the mind becomes infected with free floating anxieties, which accumulate and become habitual, which is exactly what happens. The longer I sit and think about it, then the effects and the worry and the anxiety all start coming in. Absolutely. We allow and often invite to haunt us as a kind of regular interference pattern, which soon we begin to regard as normal. Now, how blatant is that? Like this interference becomes normal. <laughs> right, which makes sense. What feels comfortable becomes normal, and that's what we gravitate towards. Absolutely. Right. Specific problems may resolve themselves, but the anxious, anxious effects remain. Worry becomes a background buzz. So worry starts to become comfortable. And this is, this is a way for you to realize what's going on. And that way you prioritize what's a concern and what's a worry. Right. If we are listening to a slightly off tune radio station for a long time and then adjust the dial to tune in accurately, we will be surprised at how much better the sound seems. Before we can fully relax, we must silence the pointlessly anxious hum of our lives and tune in precisely to the pure silence where our personal quest for content, contentment may be fulfilled. And so this exercise is going to help trying to silence that buzz. Now, everybody does do a different things, and some things might be on a greater scale than others, but this is just a standard little exercise to kind of help, you know, get that buzz out of your head. And that way you can concentrate on what's actually a concern versus a worry. Free floating anxiety is, for many of us, a constant companion. We may have become so used to hearing the background buzz of worry that we do not even acknowledge its presence. This visualization, visual, visualization exercise <laughs> is designed to help you to identify this hum and banish it, at least temporarily, until the next time worry starts to invade your outlook. So it helps until the next one comes, but you just do the exercise each time. Hey. Number one, sit comfortably and close your eyes. Imagine that you are walking down a path in a serene forest. Soon you become at a cross like a clearing. Walk slowly to the center of the glade and sit down. And that's basically just find your happy place and visualize it. Number two, as if from nowhere animals surround you, they mean no harm, but each represents a concern. The larger the animal, the greater your anxiety. For example, a fleet-footed gazelle may represent a work deadline. A roaring lion, trouble within a relationship. Number three, in one part of the glade is a beehive. Bees swarm nearby, making the hum of a free-floating worry. Gently touch each of the animals. As you do so, they quieten and disappear into the forest. The only sound left is the buzz of the bees. Imagine all your tiny worries one by one entering the beehive until the glade is silent. Your worries are still, your concerns will be dealt with another day. All around is peace. And I love that exercise because even though I mean, um, I know some people, it's, it is kind of hard to concentrate your thoughts for that long, but the more you work on it, and that's basically showing you how to prioritize what's a concern and what's a worry and to tune in on different thoughts and to help you stop worrying. Right. And what I saw and what you did there, um, I love moments with Mocha. You always pick the greatest shit. Yes, the words you said were good. 
and you know I, I totally am down for what you were saying. But I like how they put it all into a picture. Okay, when you're trying to maintain calmness or achieve calmness or whatever, you're usually not in a place of calmness, okay? I like the picture of the bear. I can yeah. see it, okay? And then I could say, okay, you are misbehaving <laughs> and I don't want to be like that, so I'm going to be over here. And it just gave me a picture, okay? It didn't change my reality at all, okay? I'm not crazy. It just gave me a nice little picture to look at and then you don't feel so like the victim right. because there's something else to look at. You can detract from that. So I like that. I like that a whole and lot. I like the fact that it actually shows you in the picture that you were in control of all of it. Correct. Correct. Now it might be shitty stuff. Like I was talking to somebody the other day and they kind of got mad at me because apparently I didn't give the answer they wanted, but that's not what I'm here for. Okay. If you just want me to agree with you, chances are you don't want to call me. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> just putting that out there. Okay. Cause I'm not going to lie to you. If what I've ever said all of these years is that I will not lie to you. So what I want people to do and I want people to see is that things are shitty. Situations are shitty, you know, being raped, being attacked, being, you know, made fun of being whatever. These are horrible things that happen to us. I think we need to validate that and, and accept that it has in fact happened and then go on and do better. I'm not saying I don't care what's going on with you. I do very much care what's going on with you. But if all you want to do is just talk about that, you're not going to get any better. And, and you have to look at things and you have to be able to say, whoa, I don't want to do that. Or what you saw in the book where it says if you dwell on it, it becomes the normal. And so you want to let it pass and then deal with each one at it. At, at and the negativity with... becomes normal. Like the negativity yeah. becomes normal. You, you know, you end up saying things like, well, of course that broke. Of course that happened. You know, well, of course it did. Okay. No, it just is a new random thing that happened. It's not a negative vibe. It's just a thing. But I work real hard and you know for years and I have trouble with it. I'm not perfect. Trying to keep it on the positive. Okay. Right. That's a very hard thing to do every day, right day now, to it day. It's a very hard thing for everybody. Everybody's trying to keep it positive, but it's it's like a, a soda can and a soda bottle and they're like shaking. It, it is. Up. And then every once in a while somebody reshakes it. So everybody was okay. And then they're all going on lockdown. Okay. So they're all getting used to that. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh, but we're coming out. And they're like, oh, wait, what? So now we trip it again. So yeah, so everybody's, but remember the rainbow's here for you guys. And we understand tripping. Okay. We're all being weird. We're all locked in. We all, you know, now if you do go out into the world, tell us how it is out there. <laughs> and not only that, but please use your mask and your gloves. Okay, do yes. the best that you can to take care of yourself. And just like Megan Stanzel, our nice our nurse from hell, um, she said people need to not be stupid. They need to stay six feet apart and wash your hands. And wash your damn hands, she said. <laughs> and wash your damn hands. Okay, now we don't have a stuffy nurse. We have a real nurse, and she'll tell you like it is. <laughs> but yeah, so wash your hands, make sure you're clean. Try not to go near too many people, especially if you know that they've been sick or that they could get sick because you could make them be sick. So if they're super old or they're sick, postpone for just a little bit and then carry on about your business. But if you need somebody to talk to, the rainbow's here for you guys. Now remember, www.rainbowsupportgroupsc.com. You can find us on the web. You can sign up for our emails. You can find out who to contact. It's all on our contact page and look for our leaders page. It's got everybody's contact on there. We look forward to hearing from you this month and we'll see you every Friday at 7 p.m. for our virtual support videos. And is there anything else you want to say, Mocha? Please do not um, forget about our email list. That way you can be a part of it to let us know and not also... Um, so if you have any topics that you want us or our board members to try to discuss on our lives to let us know too, email them in, comment on our videos, message us about them. Um, Cause we, 
this is a time where we can really discuss any topics that you'd like us to. Um, yep, because we're totally here and waiting on you. Yep. But, yep, other than that, I think we're done. I think we're done. Well, we love you guys really a lot and look forward to hearing from everybody. Okay, David, yank it. Bye, <laughs> Bye Mocha. Mm-hmm. <laughs>